Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to Seven Skills in Seven Days. I gotta tell you, I'm really proud of you for taking the step, committing to your skills, committing to growth, committing to your personal development. During this time or any time, the skills did everything for me. Um, yeah, I tried to get lucky. I tried to be in the right place at the right time. I tried timing. I tried all this stuff. But until I developed the skills, I just didn't have the confidence. And because I didn't have the confidence, I took less action. And when I took less action, I got, you know, obviously diminished results. And at the beginning for me, one of the worst habits that I had when I joined network marketing was I was a blamer. I used to blame everybody else for my problems, blame everybody else for my lack of success, blame everybody else for my lack of results. <clears throat> and because I wasn't taking the action, because I didn't have the skills, I really, I blamed my upline, which is fashionable and common in today's world. I blamed <clears throat> the economy, I blamed people, I blamed the training, I blamed the company's product, I blame uh, the compensation plan, it wasn't fair. You know, I blamed uh, successful people, wouldn't give a guy like me a chance, nobody would listen to me. I blamed the fact I didn't know that many people, I blamed the fact I didn't have an education, or at least a, a good education no college education, barely escaped high school. <clears throat> I blamed my friends, limiting thinking. I blamed my family, not supporting me enough. I blamed everything. I mean, it's just, but I gotta tell you, blame is a dead end street. Because, <clears throat> I mean, where do you go? If, if, if the moment you blame, I want you to understand something. The moment you blame something or someone else for your lack of success or achievement, in that moment, you take yourself out of control of your life. Now you can't be happy or successful unless something or someone else changes. You can't be expected to achieve unless someone or something else changes. <clears throat> I remember we're, we're going to be talking about finding prospects today, skill number one, finding prospects. And before we get started with that, I'll just tell you one story because when I first got involved in this profession, I made a list, like so many people do. I made a list. My list had about 100 people on it. A bunch of them are broke or negative. And I went to the people, on, and, and the list was like my treasure map. The list was like I was going to succeed or fail based upon this list. If this list panned out and it turned into gold, then I was gonna have a career. But if the list wasn't any good, I wasn't gonna have a chance. So <clears throat> I started going to my, you know, my best people, top of the list, with the least amount of skill, the highest amount of anxiety, and I started to prospect those people. And we're gonna get into prospecting, but I went to those people and I started to cross them off. And as the names started to dwindle, they said, no, 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 no. As the, the, the crossed outline started to get bigger, my anxiety got higher and higher. I got really scared. And I remember I went to a company convention. And now I, I didn't lack for hunger, I was hungry. But I was looking in the wrong areas. I was looking in the wrong directions. And what I ended up doing is I went to a company convention and I heard that there was some big shots, the big high ranking people in the company. I overheard somebody that they were, they were getting together 
to talk business. And they had this boardroom in this convention center to do it. So I snuck in. And I'm sitting in the sideline, and nobody asked me who I was or what rank I was. And they finally opened it up for questions uh, after they, they talked for about an hour and a half on different, different topics. So I decided I was going to take this moment because at that moment, I had run out. I didn't have anybody to talk to. Really. Some people say that they did that, but I had run out. I didn't know. Everybody I knew I had talked to, and they had either said yes or no. So I didn't know who I was going to talk to or how I was going to do it. So I, I, I raised my hand in this little meeting and I said, uh, excuse me, how do you find new people to talk to? Because I've run out. And clearly I was in the wrong room because they looked at me like I was a bug. They looked at me like I was from Mars. And they're just like, you know, kid, you're going to have to figure that out. You're in the wrong room. It's such a basic question to such a high-powered group. The, the top earner in the company later pulled me aside and gave me some tips to be able to start. I'm going to give you some of those tips today. But, uh, but it wasn't long after that I made the decision to go pro. And I decided to learn this. This and the other skills that we're going to be talking about together. Um, and that changed my life. Once I decided to go pro, it changed my life. And, I, I'm, and, and look, we're going to be covering one skill a day. I don't know how long each session is going to go. We're doing this live. If you're watching this on replay, welcome to the replay. But we're doing this live. So I don't know how long it's going to go. It's going to go until we're done. I, I want you to think of me as being in your house, coaching you personally on how to master these skills, OK? So as we get started, and, and, and uh, I'm, I'm going to be writing on the board. We've got some graphics for you. We have some video clips from different events for you uh, that we're going to be doing. And there's some resources for you I'm going to be sharing with a minute for you to be able to download. I want this to be comprehensive. I want you to be solid. I want you to, to feel like you have a, a track to run on when it comes to building your skill base by the end of these seven days. Now, I will tell you this. <laughs> This is not just wave a magic wand and poof, you have skills. You're going to have to work your ass off. Sorry. You're, you're going to have to study. You're going to have to apply yourself. I mean, finding prospects is a skill that requires work. You can't just have somebody give, those, the pros, the, give you uh, prospects. This is a skill that requires work. You've got to dig them out. You've got to identify them. You've got to build relationship. I'm going to teach you how to do that. But you're going to have to work your butt off. Now, I would rather have you work your butt off for seven days and have a foundation of, of skill to be able to move forward than seven weeks. I'd rather have you do it seven days than seven months, seven days than seven years. Took me three and a half years before I made the decision to finally learn the skills. Other than that, I was just trying to get lucky. I was hoping for the best, right? I had my little lottery business, you know, I was just hoping that, that uh, somebody else, I was gonna scratch off somebody and they were gonna be the magic person that makes me all the money. So um, first thing I want to do, I want to take you to uh, a, a short clip from uh, 2018 GoPro Recruiting Mastery where we talk about setting up the skills, okay? Check that out, and I'll be back when it's done. Skills build a foundation for everything. Now, some of you, there's so many people in this room that are better networkers than I ever was. So many million-dollar-a-year earners in this room. It's just like they're everywhere. It's like, oh, yeah, you're a million-dollar earner? Oh, nice to meet you. When I started in this profession, six-figure earner was the holy grail. I mean, it's still awesome, but it's everywhere. It's just like sand on the beach, another, another six-figure earner. How many people are earning six figures or more in network marketing? Stand up, please. Take a look around. This is normal, folks. Congratulations to all of you. If you're making more than 250000 stay standing. Everybody else sit down. More than 250000 Take a look. How big of an executive do you have to be in a corporation to get paid this kind of money? If you're getting paid a half a million or more, stay standing. Everybody else have a seat. Half a million dollars or more. 
A million dollars a year or more. Stay standing. Everybody else have a seat. A million dollars a year. If these people worked in a corporation, in a Fortune 500 company, the C CFO would be having a meeting about them immediately, trying to figure out a way to pay them less money. <laughs> Look at these people. 1.5 million, stay standing, everybody else have a seat. 1.5 million a year. Look at that. Unbelievable. Two million dollars a year, stay standing, everybody else have a seat. Two million dollars a year. It's unbelievable. Big numbers. All right, everybody go ahead and have a seat. Guess where this started? It started with faith for all of them. Faith that maybe, maybe, just maybe this thing that I can't totally understand might be real for me. And then they began the journey to, be, to develop the skills. With the skills, their confidence started to grow. So I'm going to ask you, even if you've been around for a while, to not be too cool for the skills. Not be too cool for what I'm going to share with you. Because either it's for you, or it's to give you a few ideas you can bring back to your team to be more of a positive influence with that team. So one way or the other, you're going to win. All right? So how many skills are the fundamental skills of the network marketing profession? There's seven fundamental skills. Let me go through the seven fundamental skills, and I want you to rate yourself on a scale of one to ten on each one of these skills. Where you're at this moment. Okay? Number one, finding prospects. Finding people to talk to. That's a skill. You got to develop this. If you're not sure who you're going to talk to, you got to work that out. Number two, inviting. How do you get people to take a look? When I first got involved in the profession, I thought people would at least want to take a look. I was wrong. They don't even want to look, even want to understand. That's a skill. It's the gateway skill. If you don't figure this out, your, your career is going to be really, really short. If people don't take a look, they won't understand. If they don't understand, they don't participate. So, inviting number two. Scale of one to ten. Where are you on these first two skills? How would you rate yourself? Are you ten? You two? You five? Do you let your upline do it for you? Where are you? Number three is presenting. How do you present to these people in a way that helps them see the picture, but also duplicates? So other people can do it too. How do you communicate your message of your product or your opportunity to the people? Are you good at that? Do you still need to work on it? Where do you, where do you uh, put yourself on a scale of one to 10 in presenting? Skill number four is following up. The fortune is in the follow-up. Most people aren't going to make a decision the first time you talk to them. It's going to take a little bit of follow-up. So in that follow-up, there's answering questions. There's overcoming objections. How do you deal with that? Are you okay with it? I went through three phases when it came to objections. I hated them at first. I just hated them. The objection showed up. I ran the other way. Seriously, I was like, some will, some won't, so what? I'm out of here. I'd run the other way because I thought, there's more people. I don't need to deal with this stuff. And I'd walk away from good prospects. And then I fought with them. People give me their objection. I'd fight with them like crazy. I'll tell you why you're wrong and why I'm right. Didn't work out so well. And then eventually I learned how to be a professional and deal with the, these objections and help these people get a a clearer picture, a greater understanding of what I had to offer. So this is really important. Rate yourself on a scale of one to ten. Where does this land? Oh my God. Walking by this group, every one of a million dollar earners is a little freaky. It's like, oh, million, 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 million. Oh, okay, million, million, million. Kind of cool. So, where do you rate yourself scale of 1 to 10 with that? Next, 
is closing, helping a person make a decision to become a customer or to become a distributor. How are, how, do you have too many people thinking about it? You haven't been able to help them make a decision? How do you help those people make a decision? How do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10? The duplication skill. You wanna know what the duplication skill is? Is getting a new person started effectively. Helping that person get off to a quick start, helping them get some results, helping them create some commissions, customers, something. Because the clock's ticking. Person starts a traditional business, they'll give you three years before they start looking for results. But in network marketing, they'll give you three weeks. You better get some results in those first three weeks, because if you don't, it's easy to get in, it's easy to get out. Price of entry is so low. Like, eh, I'll write it off, I'll, I'll do something else. So that's skill number six. Well, how, do you, how good are you with your systems to get people started effectively? Are you good? Are you strong? Are you solid? Or does it need work? Is it the same for everybody, or is it all over the board? Where do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on getting people started effectively? And then skill number seven, promoting events. This is the highest paying skill in all of network marketing. Your ability to get people, get butts in seats at your destination events, at your company conferences, at your regional events, at events like this, pays you so much money. It does so much of the work for you. If you're good at this, it solves a lot of the problems and it gives you time to develop the other skills. If you could become just good at promoting, promoting. So these are the seven. Where do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on each one of these? So a little clip just to kind of set the stage as we get started here. What I want you to think about right now specifically is how do you rate yourself on a scale of one to 10 on finding prospects your ability to have at your disposal at any moment in time an unlimited supply of quality people that you can talk to about your product, your opportunity. Now we're gonna talk about this more when it comes to inviting, but our goal with all this, some people think that um, our job in network marketing is to sell products. That's not our job. That is our, a byproduct of our job. It's a result of our job. It's how we get paid from our job, but it's not our job. Some people think our job is to recruit people, build a team. And that's also a result of our job. It's not our job. We get paid for that too. Well, we don't get paid for the act of, of building the team. We get paid for the product moving through the team. But we get leverage from the team. Even so, that's not our job. Our job is to educate people to the point that they understand what we have. We're all teachers. We're here to educate people. So what we're trying to do now with skill number one is find people to educate. Find people to provide understanding. Pro pro find people to give knowledge about our product or our, our, our opportunity. So I don't want you to be scared with this. I don't want you to freak out with this. This is, uh, I want you to be, think of this as collecting friends. Collecting friends. Um, if you're an introvert, you can collect friends. If you're an extrovert, you can collect friends. If you don't think you know anybody, you can collect friends. We have tools at our disposal right now that are just astronomical, incredible. You can reach the world, okay? So I wanna give you some steps on finding prospects, and many of them you already know. Now, <clears throat> listen, step number one Step number one is to build what I like to call an active candidate list. An active candidate list, a comprehensive list of people that you could have an opportunity to, I guess I'm going to this camera, um, a comprehensive list that you can have an opportunity to share your product or your opportunity with. Now, I'm gonna give you some, some points on this Number one, my recommendation on building this comprehensive, I, I call it an active candidate list for a reason, but my recommendation 
is to get, is to put it on paper, okay? If I'm working with you personally, I don't want to, I don't want to sit and you know, have you tell me it's on your phone, and I don't want you to tell me that, uh, oh, I have it in a spreadsheet. Yeah, that's fine. Most of the time, it's out of sight, out of mind. I want you to put it on paper. And what if you had a journal that was just filled with contacts and their contact information and what stage they are in the process? Like they're identified, have you talked to them ever? Have you exposed them to the product? Have you exposed them to the opportunity? What were the exposures? What's the next step? I want you, to, you know, what I'd like you to do at least for this exercise for now is to start on paper, get something that you like. I mean, if it's a journal, get a journal, go on Amazon or wherever and, and, and purchase a journal if you, if you don't have one already. And at least for this exercise, I want you to create a fresh new candidate list. This is worth its weight in gold. This document is potentially the most valuable book in your library. So put it on paper. Um, number one is make sure that you write it down, okay? Next, it's important that you don't prejudge because you're gonna be tempted to prejudge. As you're building this list, and do you have these uh, little sub, the sub bullets underneath? Like step one, step two, or no? Yep. Okay. I'm just uh, talking to the production team here. Don't mind us. So the active candle list, put it on paper, number one. Don't prejudge number two, because you're gonna be tempted. You know, there's gonna be some people you're gonna say, you know what, I don't wanna talk to that one. That person's negative. That person hurt my feelings. I'm not talking to that person right now. They're too rich, they're too healthy, they're too successful, they're too busy, they're too pessimistic, they're too cynical, they're too whatever. Let go of that. Your job is, I, I, I don't even care if you contact them. You can decide if you're gonna contact them later. But it's really important that you take that person out of your brain and you put them onto paper. Even if you don't even want them on your team, put it on paper anyway, okay? I want your commitment that you're gonna do that. Do not prejudge, no matter what. Matter of fact, I've got a, I, I have a painful story that I'll, uh, that I'll show you from a, a training that I did recently uh, about how damaging it was for my career when I prejudged, check it out. Do not prejudge. Let me tell you a story about prejudging. I grew up in Minnesota, and when I got involved in network marketing, I grabbed my mom and dad's address book, and I quickly called all of their friends before they had a chance to call them, because they were my upline. My mom's right here. I grabbed her address book. Stand up, mom, say hi. That's my mama. She was involved in network marketing before I knew what network marketing was. I remember we lived in the country and she got involved with a company called Slender Now. Diet powder. Shakes. She was making, you know, what was it at that time? What was, the, what was, the, what was your, the biggest check you got back then? 3000 a month? 3,000 a month when 3,000 a month was something. Back in the 70s. Then that company had struggles. On we moved. I didn't know any of this stuff. So anyway, I call all the people through the address book and I'm freaking out because I don't know anybody. And I have some relatives that were involved in evangelism. My, my second cousins. And I'm like, uh, they're not gonna be interested. You know what they did? They traveled around the country talking about the evils of rock and roll. <laughs> Seriously, they're burning records, doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Number one, I was like, well, they're busy. 
Number two, I kind of like the music. This is them. These are my cousins. Whitney Houston, really? <laughs> so these are my cousins. So I never called them. I never called them. Somebody called them. And I didn't know they were tired of being on the road. They were looking for something else. They were looking for something else to do. I was like, really? Guess how much their family has made since they made the decision to get involved in network marketing. These relatives that I never called. Over $40 million in commissions. <laughs> I never gave them a chance. I never even gave them the opportunity to say no. Didn't do it. Like, nah. I prejudged them. $40 million mistake. I would, s <laughs> I would save you that pain. There's somebody on your list I know that you're saying, oh, that's not for them. Oh, they'd never do it. Oh, they're too successful. Oh, they're negative anyway. You know what a negative person is? Somebody's just had their heart broken. That's all it is. They've lost hope. They've lost direction and they're lashing out. Maybe they're hoping. They're praying for somebody to come and see past their negativity to help them make a decision to change their life. So don't prejudge. Empty your phone out. So, are we agreeing? We're not going to prejudge, right? We're going to empty your mind on paper. Whether it's a journal, you've got this, or I want to show you one other resource that's available to you here. You'll find uh, that you can download. It's How is it connected to this system? It's on the page, they can download this. This is called a memory jogger. Part of the seven skills in seven days. How to build an ever expanding list. You can download this. It has space to be able to um, put 600 contacts inside of this. Even though there's space to be able to do that, I would use this workbook, but then I would, I still like a journal. Um, I just think it's, it's better for me. I feel better with it. Um, and I don't know, some of this business is emotional. So this is available to you. So here's where we're gonna start. We're gonna start with the big three. The big three. Every single contact you have in your phone goes on the list. If they are not currently a distributor, they go on the list, okay? Even if they're a customer, they go on the list. If they've said no before, they go on the list. Every single person in your phone goes on the list, period. Now, I'm going to ask you to do the work. You know, don't just make a list of 50 and say, oh, I have white writer's cramp, and my hand's tired, and yeah, this is hard, and I, I have enough people to talk to anyway. I, I need you to make a comprehensive list. This is an active document. Just like a business might be valued based upon its inventory, that your business is going to be valued based upon the quality and the quantity of this list. So don't you go get lazy on me. Not, not step two yet. Stay on step one, not step two. Thank you. So first, every single name that is not currently a distributor goes on your list. Do you understand? That's number one. Number two, every single person that you've ever emailed who, or who has ever emailed you, their, contact, their name and contact information goes on the list. Because if you're like me, there's a lot of people you email that you, you don't necessarily have in your phone, vice versa. So all the phone con contacts in your phone, all the contacts in your address book online, all the contract contacts in your email inbox. Just go through and scan who you received emails from, actual human beings, who you've sent emails to, actual human beings, and write their names down. If you don't have their phone number, get their email, and you can use the email to get their phone number. 
If you only have their phone number, use their phone number to get their email, right? So that's step one and step two. Step three is every single contact in your social media. If they are a friend, they go on the list. They go on this list if they're a friend. Everyone, if they're not a distributor, they go on the list. 100%, every single friend. We're not there yet. I understand, but I'm doing the points underneath the step one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, sorry. We're still on step one. Everybody in your phone, everybody in your email, everybody on social, okay? Everybody on social goes on the list. If they're a follower, they go on the list. If they're a friend, they go on the list. If you're connected on Twitter, they go on the list. If you're connected on Snapchat, if you're connected on Instagram, if you, everybody, they go on the list, got it? Now this is gonna take some work. Then I want you to use this memory jogger to think of people you might have missed. And you'll, you'll see in here, there's all these categories. It's something like 90 categories or something like that. Members of your own family, mother and father, grandparents, children, brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, all of them go on the list. Everyone. <coughs> list you already have. Current address book, online contact manager, email address list, cell phone contacts, holiday cards list, wedding invitation list, child's birthday invitation list, business card list. They all go on the list. They all go inside of this active candidate list. Your closest friends, those you associate with regularly, friends and neighbors, people you work with, church members, they all go on the list. Hobby friends, hobby buddies, camping friends, dancing class friends, drawing class friends, fantasy football league friends, fishing friends, hunting friends, karate class buddies, singing class, sculpting, woodworking, workout, people who you play with, bowling, football, golf, racquetball, tennis, volleyball. Think of all these different areas. Write their names down. Those you do business with. Who does work on your car? Who's your accountant? Who's your banker? Who's your babysitter, child care provider, or, or somebody does it for somebody else? Who's your dentist? Who's your doctor? Who's your dry cleaner, your grocer, gas, gas station attendant, hairstylist, housekeeper, insurance agent, lawyer, merchant, pharmacist, real estate agent, travel agent? Use that. This is all in the memory jogger download, by the way. <clears throat> Who's your architect? Who's your association member? Bus driver, butcher, baker, computer tech, children's friends, parents, chiropractor, club members, delivery person, FedEx or UPS driver, fireman, florist, jeweler, leasing agent, mailman, minister, pastor or their wives, pet groomer, photographer, police officer, property manager, sports teams members, your kids' team mem teammates too and their parents, tailor, veterinarian, waitress, waiter, your favorite, water supplier, those you've associated with in the past, former coaches, former coworkers, former roommates, former teacher, former people in your hometown, previous neighbors, military co cohorts, retired coworkers, schoolmates, who is your boss? Who sold you your air conditioner, your boat, your business cards, your camper, your car, your truck, your computer, your cell phone, your dishwasher, your laundry machine, equipment or supplies, fishing license, furniture, glasses, contacts, house, hunting license, refrigerator, tires or auto parts, TV or stereo, vacuum cleaner or wedding items. See where I'm going? This is work, this is deep. This is not just like uh, wave a magic wand and have everything. Your fingers are gonna be tired. You're gonna go through some pens. Now, you, who are individuals, who, who, who do you know that are currently looking for a part-time job? Who's ambitious? Who's enthusiastic? Who's entrepreneurial? Who's a caring person? Who's a champion? Who's fun and friendly? Who's a fundraiser? Who's involved in all the charities? 
is just going through this, is it starting to jog some of your mind as far as, oh, wow, I forgot about that person. Empty your mind out on paper, right? Don't trust your memory. Pale ink is better than the best memory. Who's a natural leader? Who's organized? Positive thinking, self-motivated. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. And then we have all the professions. Who do you know who's an accountant, ad, actor, advertiser, air force officer, architect, airline, alarm systems agent, army officer, acupuncturist, that's just A. I'll give you the Bs, baker, banking professional, barber, baseball player, basketball player, beauty salon worker, broker, builder, that's B. Let me see if there's any Zs. No Zs. Xylophone uh, operator. Zoologist. There's got to be a zoologist. We got in the V's, valet attendant, veteran, volunteer. W's, waiter, waitress, web designer, writer. Y, yoga instructor. And then who do you know that lives in a different city than you? And then we list all the states in the United States. We list all the countries. Do you know anybody that lives in uh, Australia? Write them down. Do you know anybody who lives in the Bahamas? Write them down. Do you know anybody that lives in uh, Bolivia? Write them down. Brazil, Canada, China, Costa Rica. Who do you know? Write them down. Germany, Greece, Greenland. Unemployed in Greenland. Anybody remember that reference? Princess Bride. Uh, inconceivable. So uh, Hong Kong, I mean, it goes on and on and on. Every country in the world is listed here. So can you see the work that is ahead of you to start doing this? Every person on your phone, everybody in email, everybody on social media, and then I want you to go inside the catacombs of your mind and literally go through every single step of that memory jogger list to think of who am I leaving out? And I want you to add them to the list. Okay, don't worry about what you're gonna do with them yet. We're gonna talk about that tomorrow. Okay, skill two. Now, now step two. List everybody your contacts are associated with. Who do they know? Pull up every single friend on social and look at their friends and see if who they know that you might know. I mean, if you want to go crazy with this, let's say you have 500 friends, okay? And you can go crazy this way. Let's say you have 500 friends and on social, and you write down all 500. And you go into your social media, and you go click on your friend's profile, which you can do. And do, do we know how, what, can you uh, Google search, what's the average number of friends a person has on Facebook? I'd be interested. Huh? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm just curious. But let's just assume for a second that the average is 200 people. I think it's probably more than that. But let's say you have 500. 338. 338, let's use the actual number. Nice work. So you got 500 friends, and each of them have 338 friends on average. That's 169,000 people that you can reach. Because if, they're, if you're friends with them and they're friends with somebody else, you have one point of connection to be able to say, hey, I see your friends with so-and-so. I thought we might have something in common, so I thought I'd say hello. Would that be hard or easy? Be pretty easy. So if you've got 500 friends, you have the ability to reach 169,000 people. 169,000. Now that's a lot of writing. 169,000 people. But that's just one degree of separation, right? You're connected through somebody else. And you have a way to introduce yourself because of that common third person. Do you understand what I'm saying? So that's what, what I want you to think about here is find out, you can go to every single one, social media, make it easy for you. Find out who their friends are and you can reach out and connect with those people. And also in step two here, I want you to be thinking about 
people who have like interests and passions that you do. Let's say you're really into um, Jim Rohn. Here's my Leading an Inspired Life book by Jim Rohn. One of my prized possessions, this book. You want to see something cool? Look at this. I'll read it to you. It said, Eric, thanks for the friendship all these years. Friendship is wealth. You make me a rich man. Jim Rohn. Pretty cool. Let's say you're a big fan of Jim Rohn. How many Jim Rohn groups are there? How many like-minded people can you find inside of Jim Rohn's fan page that you could friend up? How many people are quoting Jim Rohn if you just use the hashtag Jim Rohn and just found those people and say, hey, I see you like Jim Rohn too. Me, me too. Maybe we should be friends, you know, and connect with them. So let's say if it's that, that's fine. Let's say you're really into, um, yoga can you find other people who are into yoga and connect and be friends with them let's say you're into old uh, classic muscle cars could you find people that are interested in the same thing as you and you don't even have to work on how what you're going to say to each other you can just find ways to bring value and have a fun relationship so what i want you to do here's your assignment as part of this i want you to list 10 things that you're interested in 10 passions is it a sports team? Is it a hobby? Is it um, an activity? What is it? Is it travel? Travel where? List 10 things that you're passionate about and then go find your people. Go find your people who are, who are equally passionate about the things that you're passionate about. And you won't have to worry about finding something to talk, talk about. It'll be easy, okay? So list the people that your contacts are connected with. Go to social media, find out the people, you, the people that they know, find out who those people are, and then find a way to connect with them. And also list 10 passions. And all you have to do is go search for the groups and search for the communities that are likewise connected to those passions. Step three, step three. This isn't just a one and done thing. You can't just write it down and it's over. This is a living, breathing thing. A person, now you gotta decide if you wanna do this slow and steady wins the race or if you wanna do this hardcore. I'd suggest at least for this season to go hardcore and then you could slow down to a regular pace. Let me give you the regular pace that worked for me. Because a person told me something, said, Eric, can you add two people to your list every day? I'm like, well, yeah, I could probably do that. If you just raise your awareness, you can add two people a day. Uh, if you just raise your awareness, you, you'll find a way to connect with two people a day. Now, we're in a unique period of time right now, but when people are walking around, moving around in daily life, it's easy to find those people. When people are sitting at home, guess where we find them? Social media, online, two a day. Here's what I decided to do at age 25. I decided I was gonna add two people a day, every single day, forever. Every day I woke up and I wasn't gonna go to sleep until I added two people to my list. I introduced myself to that person, somehow got their contact information, whatever, or I went to my friend's friends, whatever, and I made sure that I had added two people a day. Because if you do that, that's about 700 people a year. It's about 3,500 people in five years. It's 7,000 people in 10 years. 7,000, not even including the people that they know. You know what's the crazy thing? I gotta give you one statistic that's mind boggling to me, or it, it, it's not mind boggling to me now, but it was mind boggling when I first heard it. 
take the top earners in network marketing. What percentage of the people that they personally recruited did they know the day they joined their company? Okay? What percentage of the people they told, they personally recruited do you think they knew the day they joined their company? The answer on average is less than 5%. Less than 5% of their success came from people that they knew. 95% plus came from people they met after. And you know why? Because they collect friends. You know why? Because they're constantly keeping their awareness up. They're constantly adding to their active candidate list. They're constantly treating this like a profession. This is their warehouse. Do you understand? They don't let their warehouse get empty. This is their warehouse. This is wealth for the people that they put in this list, as well as wealth and success for, for themselves and their families. Whether they're doing this to be able to take care of themselves, which is fine, by the way, or they're doing this to take care of other people, this is, this is the wealth. This thing goes dry, so does your business. You gotta be a pro here. You gotta decide that you're gonna go after it. So, Two a day, two a day, two a day, two a day, two a day. Right now, now I've, I've given you a lot of homework already, and some of you are like, pull, pull, pull. when am I gonna have time to do this? You got plenty of time, just start, just start. And if, if for now, you might be adding 100 people a day to your list just from your phone and your email and your social media. You got 100 and then your arm gets tired. You got to do it again tomorrow. No, do another 100, your arm gets tired. You got to do it again tomorrow. And then the friends of your friends, oh my God. And then my arm gets tired. I got to do it again tomorrow. I got to give you one quick tip before I, before I keep moving. Oh, first of all, let me finish the thought. Add as many as you can from your existing context and from your mind and from your friends' friends and all that stuff. As many as you can a day right now. Once that is relatively complete, I would suggest during this season to be adding 10 people a day. 10 people who have the same passion as you, 10 people who have like-minded as you, 10 people who have similar beliefs than you. You can find those people based upon your 10 passions that you listed. Find, for, find one new friend for each of those 10 passions before, every, every, before you go to bed every night, okay? And 10 a day, 10 a day, 10 a day, 10 a day, 10 a day. And now you're talking about huge numbers. Huge, huge, huge numbers. Um, so now I gotta think of what I was gonna say before I sidetrack myself. I'll remember it in a second. Um, nope, it was there again. 10 a day, 10 a day. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving, and then uh, as soon as I keep moving, then I'll remember again. Um, okay, I want you to think about people as not as a destination, but as a doorway. Too many people change their thinking, and and I'll tell you where I came came up with this. Well. I'm gonna show you a, a quick um, tip from uh, a GoPro Recruiting Mastery training on this topic and then I'll come back in just a minute. I want you to think of a prospect not as a destination, but as a doorway. So if you bring in 200, 200 people you put on a list, that's 200 doorways that you can open and explore. 200 worlds that you can step into. 200 groups of people that you can have a conversation with, 200. Now if those 200 each have 200, now you have 40,000 doorways to be able to walk into. Because rarely is the person that you personally involve into your business going to be the superstar. They're a doorway leading to somebody else, leading to somebody else, leading to somebody else until you find somebody hungry. And once you find somebody hungry, whether they're one first generation or 40 generations deep, your mission it becomes clear. All you have to do is give life to that hunger. Give direction to that hunger. Give assignments to that hunger and everything else will take care of itself. 
So let go of the scarcity mentality. There's a million things you can do on social media, but we, with, with or without that, could you make a list of 200 people, yes or no? Yes. Could you figure out those people's 200, yes or no? Yes, that's 40,000 people to have a conversation. Do your best to get 40,000 people to say no to you. You've got to be terrible. <laughs> Think of the worst pitch ever. Call them up and say, hi, we've never met. You wouldn't want to be interested in a business, would you? <laughs> Do that 40,000 times, you'll build a business. As bad as that would be. Now, can we do better? Of course. But don't put so much weight on the 14 people that you really want to join your business. And you ignore the 40,000 that are praying for an opportunity and just hoping that you show up. Got it? All right. So... I move around because I want to see all you guys, you know, I want to like hang out. So all the people in VIP are like, this sucks, man. I'm just staring at an empty stage. Speaking of that, I'm going to go up and hang out with them. So skill number one, finding prospects. How many people feel a little bit more empowered to find some prospects? Anything, if you're not feeling empowered, it's just limiting beliefs. I was talking with a gentleman, I was doing an event in uh, Austria, in an arena like this, and a person raised his hand, he said, I just moved to Milan in Italy, and I don't know anyone, and I want to build a business in Milan. He said, what do I do? And I, he looked like a sharp guy. I said, have you ever written a business plan in your life before? He said, well, yeah, plenty of them. How many people have ever written a business plan? I said, what if you wrote a business plan and the objective of the business plan was to find people to talk to in Milan? And he went, oh, I could do that. I said, okay, I want you to pull out all the stops. Tomorrow I want you to come back we, were, we had a multiple day event. I want you to come back. I want you to present your business plan to the rest of the room. He came back the next day. He said, I've got 15 strategies. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm putting all the influencers in the market together. I'm making all this stuff happen. I'm doing this community work. I'm connecting with the charities. I've got it all figured out. See, it had nothing to do with his availability to get there. It had to do with his limiting beliefs. If you feel like you're not enough, if you feel like you can't do it, then you won't be able to. But if you come up with a creative way to solve the problem, it's going to get easy for you. Okay? So stop badgering the same 14 tired folks. It's true. We do, we do badger the, uh, a couple people over and over and over, and we can do better than that. Now, I remembered what I was going to tell you. And it came from, um, see, I just needed to have a video clip so I could remember these things. Uh, when I was, this came from one of my mentors, uh, my early mentors, one of the top earners in our, the number one earner in the company that I was in. Remember when I told you I went into that boardroom and I asked the question and I, I really felt like an idiot um, because they were just so past my simple basic question. But the top earner pulled me aside, he said, and he gave me some tips, the tips that I'm giving you as far as how to build a list. I said, yes, I get that, but what do I do now? I'm full time. I, I've got to have somebody to talk to now. He said, Eric, if you had to, could you move heaven and earth and sponsor one person in the next 72 hours? I said, if I had to, yeah, sure. He said, you wouldn't even need the training, would you? No, I, I, I would just be scrappy enough, hungry enough. I go walk around at the mall. I'll do, do something. I'll go door to door if I have to, whatever. But I could find a way to sign some, some people. He said, Eric, let me tell you the best, one of the best groups of people that you can talk to is your new distributors prospects. I was like, tell me what you mean. He said, well, 
if you work with that brand and distributor, they're going to be scared, right? Yeah. They're going to be nervous, right? Yep. They're going to be anxious, right? Yep. Uh, but you're confident when it comes to presenting the opportunity, right? You just don't have enough people to talk to. Correct. I said, well, if they'll make a list of people, all they have to do is introduce those people to you. They'll be willing to do that because they want you to do the presentation so they don't have to. All you got to do is encourage them to build their list and introduce you to them. And now you've got 200 prospects to talk to. I said, yes, but they're not my front line. He said, who cares? Rarely is a frontline person going to be your superstar anyway. Who cares if it's level two or level three? For some of you, you just went, oh my God, I have this existing team. I can go talk to all those people. If you're stuck, move heaven and earth, sponsor someone, or take that person that's currently in your group and instead of ignoring them, trying to do your personal recruiting, help them do some recruiting. They provide the people. You provide the presentation. All you got to do is teach them how to build a list, which is where you're getting from this training, and then how to introduce you to the people on that list. And they're going to be grateful because they're nervous as heck. And you're going to be grateful because you need some fresh people to talk to that don't have preconceived ideas about you. Understand? So one of the best ways is your team members' prospects keeps you active, keeps your business moving. Make sense? So, back to recap here. Step one, build a comprehensive list. Step two, list everyone, all your contacts, and who are they connected with? It's going to open up a whole new world. Step three, constantly expand your list. Step four, it looks like we're going to get uh, our first training in, in an hour. It's a pretty simple one. Even though you've got a lot of homework to do, I mean, you got your, your memory jogger, you got a lot of homework to do. And also, I would tell you, before we give you step four and five, <clears throat> this course is available inside of GoPro Academy. It's a detailed, it's got program transcriptions, a workbook, the whole thing. Uh, sorry, wrong one. Where is it? Here it is. Limitless. How to never run out of quality prospects. It's available inside of GoPro Academy. You all have access to it. If you want to go deeper, even further than this, this is going to give you an ocean. We already given you an ocean of homework. But if you want to go further, you can either rewatch what we just what we're doing right now, or you can go watch this. Now, <clears throat> step number four is network on purpose. Network on purpose. Now, in our interesting times right now depending on when you're watching this, it's a little more difficult to physically network on purpose. You can't go join and, you know, go to a new church right now. You can't go, go join a new gym right this second. You can't go, you know, connect with business owners in your local market, but you still can network on purpose online. Find influential people, find quality people, find valuable people, connect into those groups. Now here's the way the greatest networkers in the world do what they do. They, their driving thought is how can I bring value to this person? I want you as a habit, if you see someone who has a need, try to think of somebody else who can serve that need and connect the two. Person says, oh my gosh, I, I just, I, I, I need these carpets cleaned and you know a carpet cleaner. You take a moment and connect those two without any agenda. If, if a person's looking for a person, they're looking for a resource, they're looking for a recommendation, do everything you can to network on purpose and bring value. Bring value. Don't keep score. Be known as that connector out there. Connectors have incredible power. Okay? So be a connector to people in need. If, you, if somebody's struggling with homeschooling their kids, and you know somebody else who's amazing at it, get three tips from that person amazing at it and, and offer those tips up to the person who's struggling with it. Or if you know somebody's amazing, why don't you just go on Zoom and, and do a little interview with that person that's amazing and just provide it, post it up for everybody that's homeschooling so they get, it, they get value from it. Why? Just to be a good neighbor. 
just to provide value. When you do that, your influence is going to grow dramatically. Okay? So step one, build a comprehensive list. Step two, list everyone your contacts are associated with. And step three, constantly expand your list. Step four, network on purpose. And step five is to break your groups down into categories. And the way I would approach this is, oh, see, we're not going to be done on time because that thing stopped. Um, so it's all right. Just leave it. Let's leave, leave it. I got my, 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 my clock timer on the floor. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It, it, uh, it, it uh, froze up on me. So that, I, I thought we were like really doing amazing in time, but, uh, but, but we'll wrap up here. Separate your list into categories because, and I would do this maybe once a month out of your big overarching list. Break down who are the 10 easiest customer prospects, easiest you can think of, that need your product, can afford your product, that will support you, whatever. Who's the 10 easiest? Who's the 10 easiest distributor prospects that you can go talk to right now? And then I would separate them into hot market, warm market, and cold market. Because we're going to approach them differently. We're going to talk about that tomorrow. I'm going to teach you tomorrow how to approach your easiest customer prospects, your easiest distributor prospects. And then I want to talk to you about how to approach hot market. Hot market are people who know you very well. Very close friends, family members. They love you, but they're not going to give you very much uh, Grace. So, how do you, you know, uh, how do you approach people in your hot market, where there's a lot of rejection typically found? I want you to just list your hot market people. I'm going to give you a very specific script on how to approach your hot market people. Warm market are people who you know. They know you. It's more of a peer level thing. Casual friends, casual acquaintances, casual connections. <clears throat> Cold market. <clears throat> are people you know of or they know of you, but you don't, you haven't made a personal connection. I mean, you might have cold market people that are your friends on social media and you don't really know them, but you're friends with them or they're friends of friends. So there's a, a different approach for hot market, warm market and cold market that we're going to um, talk about tomorrow. So <clears throat> maybe once a month, take your list, break it down, into categories so you can focus because this is going to turn into an ocean of contact and say, okay, who am I focusing on for the month of April? Who am I focusing on for the month of May? Who am I focusing on for the month of June? Make sense? All right. Look, <clears throat> I'm really excited to be able to work with you live over the course of these seven days or on replay if you're watching on replay. I'm really proud of you for doing this, but now the work starts. You need to go to work. I want to see that you are doing the work, that you are making a physical active candidate list, that you're emptying your mind out on paper, that you're not prejudging anyone. You're giving every single person a chance, right? That you're th getting creative. You're networking on purpose. You're thinking outside of the box. You're going to the friends of friends. You're thinking about the, you can even have a, a separate book that's just for your team members contacts that you can have them help you with making introductions so you can talk with them about what it is that you have so that's our lesson number one hope you got value that's skill number one now wherever you are rating yourself on a scale of one to ten I hope you're at a higher level now than you were an hour ago at least knowing what to do this is work this is a grind this is no joke but I promise you, it's worth it. You put in the work, you fill your warehouse with inventory, and then you don't need to stress out. What happens when you have all these contacts is you're not so devastated when one person says no, because you have so many people to talk to. You have an ocean of people to talk to, okay? So I'm excited for you in this process. Tomorrow, we're gonna go deep, and it's, a little, uh, it's quite a bit longer than today, uh, it's going to be, you know, probably approaching two hours tomorrow, which is inviting. That's the gateway skill. How do you get people to take a look? 
I thought that they would want to take a look. I found out I was wrong. How do you get them to take a look? Because that's the only way you can educate them as to what it is that we have. All right? So that's it for today. I love you, and I'll see you tomorrow.